Okay, so let's start off with uh, Ezekiel 1 and Revelation 1. Oh, right. Ezekiel 1 and Revelation chapter 1. I want to talk about fire and feet. Now, I know that's a weird topic, but there's something about fire and feet. Maybe there might be, some <laughs> there might be something that people can figure out on that one. All right, so we're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 1 first, and then uh, we're going to start off later on with Revelation 1. Okay, let's talk about celestial beings here. Now, these celestial beings, you'll notice what's going on with their feet here. We're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 4. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as a color of amber out of the midst of the fire. Okay, whatever came out of the north there, it was all these different elements, and it included fire. So that's how much we know. Now let's keep reading here. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. So you'll notice right here that they had feet, and the sole of their feet was like calf's feet. Anyway, so that, I'm not an artist, but that's calf. Okay, so we'll look at the side sideway, okay? So that's a calf's foot. Now, concerning a calf's foot right here, notice that they sparkle like the color of burnished brass. So the point is right here, it's like burnished brass, and this is their feet. Celestial beings seems like that they have fire in their feet. So we'll go to Revelation 1 now. We're going to return to Ezekiel 1 eventually. We're going to turn to Ezekiel 1 eventually. But we're going to look at Revelation chapter 1 next. Revelation chapter 1. Now look at the Lord Jesus Christ here, what he's described as. We're going to look at verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto what? Fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. There's something about celestial beings where they have feet that's like really glowing like fine brass, okay? So let's just put a little bit of fire right here. Now why is that? Now I can give a hint here, okay? Look at Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14. Now, we know that when you go through the second heaven right here, And then the Bible says that in the second heaven, that's where he put the stars at, okay? Now, above the second heaven is the third heaven, right guys? We all know that. Above the second heaven is the third heaven. Now, when we reach this third heaven, so this is second, this is heaven itself, where God lives. And this is his throne. What's between the second and third heaven? Sea of glass, right? Now the Bible says that there is a sea of glass that's between the second and third heaven, and that's the floor of heaven itself, the third heaven. That's the floor of heaven itself, the sea of glass. Within this sea of glass, you know what the Bible says about this frozen deep? There's fire on it. Look at Revelation 14. And we're going to read Revelation 14 and verse, uh, let's see right here. So, it pro so I read, uh, it's 15, sorry, it's chapter 15. We're going to look at verse 2, Revelation 15 verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with what? Fire. Now, keep reading. 
And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass. Okay, here's the point here that I'm driving at. Celestial beings, people who live in heaven, or beings who live in heaven, what is their feet touching on? What's the floor that they're touching on? The sea of glass, right? The sea of glass is what? Fire. It's mingled with fire. Now this is what I can see why celestial beings have fire on their feet. The reason why is because they're walking on this. This is the floor of heaven. That's why their feet is like burnished brass. Because they've been up here. That's why the feet would be burnished brass. That would make a lot of interesting sense right here. Because remember, go back to Ezekiel 1. Ezekiel 1. The Bible calls this what? It's also called Sea of Glass, but it's also called what? The firmament, right? So within the second heaven right here and the top of the second heaven, we call this the firmament. Coming out of the firmament here, oops, so uh, not this one. It's like I'm jumping on four different pens. Okay, this person's coming off out of the firmament onto the earth. So be the firmament is between the earth and heaven. So this is the earth. Ezekiel 1 shows that these four celestial beings, when they get out of the firmament, their feet are fine, uh, like fine brass when they talk to Ezekiel down on the earth. We're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 1 once more. But this is very interesting. Do you know what object follows the feet? the bottom feet of these celestial beings. So this one, I don't know much. All I can do is lay foundations here. And then maybe you guys can figure something more out from there. Verse 13, and it's for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright. And out of the fire went forth lightning. So these are all burned up creatures. Now, we're also going to look at verse 16. Uh, verse 15. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel, and they four had one likeness. And their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the midst of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not whither uh, and they and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went, thither was their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Verse 21, when those went, these went, and when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. So notice that these wheels were accompanying wherever these cherubs went. Now keep your hand over here. We're going to look at chapter 10. Ezekiel chapter 10. Ezekiel chapter 10. Now it said that whatever this wheel is, it was like the color of a barrel. Okay? It was like a color of a barrel... And we read it, it came out of where? The firmament, right? Did you, didn't you read Ezekiel 1? It came out of the firmament. And whatever this wheel object is, it followed these beings that had fire in their feet. And it's the color of a barrel. 
What object can you think about that's cir circular and like a wheel that's flying <laughs> in the firmament? And not only that, it's very hot when it lands. Hmm. We're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 10. UFO, right? UFO. Verse 1, then I looked and behold in the firmament. See that? Right over here. That was above the head of the cherubims. There appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims and scatter them over the city. And he went in, uh, he went in my sight. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in and the cloud filled the inner court. So you'll notice right here that the wheels, they can be above the cherubim. And it seems like, I could be wrong, but it seems like, verse 2, it could be underneath their feet as well. Now the thing is this, is that if their feet were like burnished brass, this thing is probably burning up as well, brightly. And hence, because of that, wherever these beings go, these go. Now, this is very interesting, is that we're told quite often that inside the wheels you would find these kind of weird creatures. But it could be very telling that these wheels could be following a creature as well. It may be that these creatures, because these wheels, it seem to go above and below the feet. It seems like that these beings can do anything with this wheel, so to speak. So it's not necessarily they have to be inside the UFO to control it. It could be that they could go above it, uh, it can be above their heads, or they can go inside it or outside of it. But basically, wherever this thing is, it's a part of them, it seems like. It's like a part of them. This is really interesting stuff. Because if you think about it, when, when you uh, see throughout the Bible celestial beings that come out, uh, out of the heaven and down in the firmament, there's always some kind of flying object that, they, that always accompanies them. For example, Elijah, when he went up, up to heaven. Celestial creatures, the two horses came with the chariot of fire. Uh, for example, the Bible says that God went on the wings of a cherub at the book of Psalms. And because this accompanies a cherub, you don't know if God was also riding on something like this too. It could be. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, he cometh with clouds. He's going to ride on clouds. Sometimes outside of the clouds, they see this circular object that comes out of nowhere. When Jesus Christ and all of us come down, you know what we're going to be coming down? We're going to be coming down on horses. It seems like that when celestial beings come down out of heaven to the earth, that there are times, not all the time, but there are times that we would be riding or something would accompany us. Now, I don't know the meaning about all this, but I'm just seeing this kind of stuff. And another thing right here, which is really interesting, is this, is that they mentioned, uh, God told Ezekiel to get it from the coals of fire from between the cherubims. Now, you know what's interesting about that? Is, I didn't think this would go this long, but uh, I want you to go to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. I don't know what this has to do with satanic forces, except that Satan wants to copycat God. But there might be something more that people can find that I would like to know about. We're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 28. This was the glory of Satan before he fell. Now some of you know this. Satan, uh, what kind of foot does he have? Okay, he's an ox, right? The soles of their feet was what? It was like calf's feet. Very similar with the ox. So Satan had this kind of foot as well. This includes Satan. Now, do you know what he was walking on in his, when he was a cherubim? Ah, uh, people are reading, people are learning. Okay, let's look at Ezekiel chapter 28. And then we'll read verse 16. But let's start off at verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. We already know that's Satan. 
That's Lucifer being the cherub in his glorified state. But look at verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the what? Stones of fire. Look at verse 14 again. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the what? Midst of the stones of fire. He had this kind of feet too. I, don't, I have no idea except that heaven has a fiery floor and then people walk on it and they got burnished brass. I don't know what reason why. I don't know what reason why. But I can tell you this, Nebuchadnezzar's image, what were the legs? Brass. Brass. But in Nebuchadnezzar's human's kingdom, Nebuchadnezzar's human kingdom, what was the feet? Iron mixed with miry clay that cannot stand. Because the rock can only stand on top of that. That's Jesus Christ. That's why the rock is going to smash the feet. And all of it's going to crumble. I don't know why, but there's something in here. We might go two hours on a unicorn on this one too. I just don't know, okay? I just don't know. But there's something interesting here that I don't know about. But I do know this as well. If you look at the book of Exodus, um, but let's, before, we, uh, before I talk about Exodus, look at verse 14, the holy mountain of God. You walked upon the midst of the st uh, stones of fire. It's a holy mount. That's up in heaven. On the earth, what was the holy mount that time? It was Mount Sinai. And they had a burning bush there. And what did God tell Moses? Take off the shoes off of your feet because you standing, you're standing on holy ground. Want me to tell you two more interesting things? All right, let me tell you two more interesting things here, okay? Mm, what should I start out with? I guess I'll start out with hell and then the saved Christians, which will be interesting. So where will lost sinners stand for all eternity then as a purification for their sins? The lake of fire, hell. That's where sin goes. <coughs> Excuse me. But this is where sin goes to hell. Why? Because God is holy who cannot stand sin. So they will be, and how you can purify sin is that they're going to have to stay here for all eternity because the soul is eternal. That's where they're going to be standing. Because that's how holiness can survive in God's creation is something that has to do with fire. Holiness connected to fire. Why? Because fire represents purity, purification. That's why burnished brass, see? It's to clean off impurities of the element and make it more fine gold. Now we're getting there. Dross. So now we're getting there toward a Christian, you can guess. A Christian is living according to the Christian, what do we call it? The Christian walk. And in the Christian walk, what does God expect at 1 Peter chapter 1? We are tried by what? Fire. And that's why that hymn goes, how firm a foundation. A foundation has to do where your feet is standing on. Thy dross is consumed and thy gold to be refined. I don't know if the hymn writer thought of that when he was writing it. But this is very interesting, is that the Christian walk when we're walking on this earth as strangers and pilgrims, we are going through fiery trials in the Christian walk. We're getting purified. And then at the judgment seat of Christ, when we go up there, can you imagine when God judges your work, what does he try it by? Fire. He just has to open up one of the floors here and let the fire burn your work. That's good. <laughs> Where's the fire coming from, Pastor? Well, the Bible already told you that what you're walking on top of. This is very interesting stuff, all right? Now, this one, uh, all I can say is this is all just uh, stuff that I'm seeing. I don't know what's representing. Something about fire and feet, I don't know. 
I don't know, but I think feet may have to do how we live in everyday life. That's what it might be representing, it seems like. What we stand upon as our foundation, what makes us and what we walk upon in everyday life, it seems to show that. And then fire, I can see it more and more, it attributes with cleansing, purification. I see that more and more. So it may have to do with that. And Satan, he's always a what? An imitator. Because he's such an imitator, that's the reason why he wants to imitate God. So then he has these charismatic meetings where they do healing services and all that. And those people will say, I'm on fire. My feet's on fire. And they literally take off their shoes and say, Ooh, the ground is hot over here. No, that's something demonic. Amen. That's something demonic. What about those Hindus? They go through some kind of spiritual, soulish, dark power where they can walk on those coals of fire. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just don't, now I don't know why Satan is doing this. The only thing I can think of is that he just wants to imitate God. Yeah. That's it. But there might be something here where satanic forces might like about just walking at feet and fire. I just don't know. You know, I just don't know. But someone figures some more stuff out, that'd be very interesting. But I know that Satan is an imitator and he does that. So I was going to show you Isaiah chapter 6 but I'll just close it right here. I'll just read it real quickly. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And then laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, that hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Coal of fire from the seraphim. Now, between the cherubims, what did Ezekiel take out? Coal from the bottom of the feet. And that represented holiness, purification. Because why? The cherubims who have fiery feet surround the throne of God, singing what? Three times. Holy, holy, holy. All right, y'all go home and do your research after that. I just don't know. Very interesting.